Do you still remember 505? Then we had the beetle car. A white beetle, a blue beetle, then another one I can't remember. Then one day he went on, um, on a train and came back from his office and they said to him that you can't continue, um, you have to resign under duress. So he didn't plan his um, retirement. He had built two and a half houses. So I said two and a half houses because the third one was not completed. So it was under duress as he came back from the training. Then when he left, he got his gratuity. Was, his gratuity was about 400,000 naira. And um, you could buy a brand new 504 or 505 for 4,800 naira. So um, 400,000 wasn't a bad deal because you could buy um, about 80 to 100 brand new cars with that, with that money. Not the 400,000 now. So, and, and the money looked huge. And he continued, invested in a few hotels here and there. Everything was going down. Everything went down, went down, went down. Um, in the space of six years, entire 400,000 um, left us with just a car. The six ga cars in the garage reduced from four, four to two. I remember when it was two, we would share one with our mom, and he would go to work, and now we had one. When he had one, we moved into Lagos. When we moved to Lagos, listen to this, we couldn't afford to feed. So we were called people who used to be very rich. Now, so for the first time in our life, I saw that we used to buy, when we want to buy rice, we buy them in bags. If you want to buy beans, you buy them in bags. If you want to buy things like um, Gary, you buy them in bags. Now we began to buy in milk buckets. We began to buy in derica. We began to buy in milk cups. Then we had bags of Gary that we used to have. So I remember one day I came back from school. I won't forget that. That was 19, I think 1995. I came back from school. I didn't have what to eat. We went back to bring out all the bags of Gary that we had in the store that we've not used for many years. We dipped our hands inside it just to bring out the crumbs inside. Then we put, put out like 10 to 20 of those bags and we began to put it inside the water, sieving the sand away from it, and that's how we began to survive. One day my father called a bit and I said that I'm not sure that um, Lagos life is good for, for, we cannot survive it, we cannot sustain it. I built a house in the village. Would you guys come to the village so that you can start living there? Life in the village is beautiful, it's cheaper, and it's better. You know, and um, he said to my mom, my mom said no. So when my mom said she's not going back to the village, the mansion in the village, he asked us, and the children, of course, we said we're not going. We'd rather be beggars in the city than go to the village where nothing was happening to us. So, and that's life, life continued. Then one day my father said it means that from today we have to just cater for ourselves. Listen to me, um, the first thing that um, hit me in life was that to survive and to feed, I would have to work for it. So how did we work for it? We began to hawk on the street. I hawked on the street for a space of seven years, and I hawked 16 things. How many things? Please, you didn't hawk with me. Say it out with joy. How many? 16. 16. You know, sometimes when people look at me, I mean, we, we've gone through hell, but will you come out smelling like heaven? So, so people don't know. You can't even tell. The first thing I sold was ice water. Do you remember ice water? Just put water into, you know the nylon for Gary and sugar? You put water into it, use a sieve, then pour the water, then tie it. Then put lots of it into a big ball, then you put blocks of ice on it. Then we carry it on our head and we walk everywhere. The people that did orientation for me for that marketing um, job, they told me that this is how to sell the product. So what you say is you carry it on your head, you say cold ice water tuture. Cold ice water tuture. I thought we were speaking good English. I didn't know that we were saying the same thing four times. What you call tautology. Cold is not far from ice. Then water. Then tutu still means cold and ice. Then re means that this is it. And we carry it on our head. I mean, because the people bringing you into the, into the business have to tell you this is how you can get customers. So we walked up and down in the general market and a papa wolf. 
walk up and down and you're selling that. One day we made enough money and I said, I'm not selling ice water again. Guess what I began to sell? The sachet water, what we call pure water. The machine for sachet water came out. We said, no, God has helped us. We have changed levels. Let's leave for the upcoming, let them be dealing with weak nylons. Let's go for strong nylons. So we began to sell pure water. We began to look down on people selling ice water. From ice water, we raised money. We moved from weak nylon to thick nylon. From thick nylon, now we raised money. Now we are selling, um, no, 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 it wasn't, no, it wasn't even bottled water. We are selling um, drinks. We are selling um, soft drinks. So we raised money. So we got Limca, Gold Spot, Tandy Grana, Green Sand, Dr. Pepper product. Then we began to sell it. And we're making more money. So even if you carry 10 bottles, you have made more money than somebody who has about 40 nylons of water. Now we began to look down on people who were selling water, whether pure water or sachet water. Then one day, somebody met me at Nigerian Port Authority. And he said that, you speak so good English. Why are you hawking on the road? I can't remember exactly what I said to him. But it sounded like, I don't have a choice. And this is how I'm going to go through life. He said, I'm going to help you. Then he said, see me tomorrow morning for 9 a.m. When somebody who sounds like a helper shows up and says, 9 a.m., I want to help you. You better get there at 8 a.m. or 7.30. So I got there very early. Guess the time he came in? He came 10.30. How can I be angry? He was apologizing. How can I be angry? I said, what is the usefulness of my life? <laughs> so I said, you cannot apologize. I should apologize for not allowing you to go for your work. So the man took me and said, let's go. And guess what? He took me to a woman. I saw a shop where they were selling food. Spaghetti, rice, beans, plantain. Something told me that this man is a good man. And why? Because I felt like this man knew I had not eaten. So before he was going to take me to where I was going to walk, he talked about this boy and he says, can we give him breakfast? And I said, no, this man is a good man. So when we got there, the, when I began to have problems was that they didn't tell me to sit down and there was no chair. So I thought, okay, well, even if I'm going to eat standing, it's okay. Then I had a conversation between the woman and this, um, this man. And I heard things like, Naim Bida, I said, Naim Bida, you don't come, you don't come. You know, so, and I said, okay, it looks like I'm the one talking about, they're talking about. Because when you carry firewood and matchbox and the sacrifice is not there, Isaac will know that he's the person that they're talking about. So, I, I, I figured out in their conversation that the work he wanted to give me, the helper of destiny, the work he wanted to give me was for me to come and start selling food. What were my job description? When the man said, you don't come, you don't come, the woman just gave me a Maggie Cube coverall. Remember the yellow Maggie Cube coverall? What, that's my induction. Put it for me, tied it for me, and gave me my JD. What's my job description? Go wash the plates, serve the food, go give people food in the morning, 4 p.m., bring the plates back, bring money, and the woman gave me a cross. My money no they miss so. So you don't show, you don't come back if you don't have complete money. One day, the police officers came and they drove everybody away from Nigeria Port Authority. I was the happiest. I was happy because I was suffering and the woman was not paying me. Listen, I said, I hawked 16 things. There's no time to tell you how that happened, other things that happened in the process. But life was very difficult. Life is tough. Tell your neighbor, say, life is tough. So it's not, it's not just something you just fold your hands and just, ex just expect things to work out for you. No, it's not true. It's not true. Because if, they, if, you, if you meet me outside, if I tell you, oh, this is what I do for a living, you'll be excited. You may say, oh, wow, maybe this person is successful. But I want to tell you the story of the pain and how I was able to evolve into what I was doing. You know, one day I was lecturing. I, I lecture um, MBA students in a school in Europe. And one of my students asked me a question and said to me, every time you teach corporate finance, you teach it so well. And you teach it very, very practically. He said, did you school in Harvard, Yale, or Princeton? And I laughed for two minutes in message version. <laughs> because Princeton, Yale, Harvard, nobody in my lineage went there. I mean, I, we, you 
you struggled your way to school. In the morning, I would go sell. Then come back by 7.30 in the morning, put on my school uniform and still go to school. Those kind of people don't go to Harvard. They were not privileged to go to Harvard. So I laughed at the girl. said, why are you laughing for so long? I said, you can't understand. I said, I, said, I didn't go to Harvard. I said, do you want to know where I learned this thing? I began to share some of these experiences of what happened to me in Africa. To say, this is how I learned those things. Then with the little knowledge that I got, of course, I had to improve on myself. You remember what Umegu said? He said two powerful things. And when Umegu talks, you better listen to him. He said, you can evolve and you can improve. Everybody evolves, but not everybody improves. Because improvement is not natural. So in the midst of all of that, I told myself, I don't want to be small. I need to be great. And the key to that was I needed to adjust and improve. And the adjustment, I will sum it up under the word called purpose. You see, if you do not have a purpose, you are going to fall into existential crisis. Every, almost everybody on earth they are dealing with existential crisis. You are either doing what you are not supposed to be doing, what you are not called to be doing, or you are doing the wrong stuff. And because of that, you will struggle with a lot of things. In fact, many people are suffering just because there is no alignment. And let me, it's just that. That's the truth. You see, the day I found alignment, you know, it was easy. And since that time, life became very easy. So it becomes like a button that when you press it, you just switch on the light. And once the light is on, the light is on. If the globe is bad, you change it. You master it. Life can be mastered. And when you master life, let me tell you the truth, it will look like you know how to do it. And the best way to master life is through purpose. Let's talk a little bit about purpose. I have a limited time. So when you say purpose, so people say purpose, some people will say purpose means why am I here? What am I here to do? What um, questions have I come to answer? What's my significance on the earth? I would simply say what I should be doing. What I should be doing. What I am wired to do as a person. What I'm wired to do. And in, the, in you trying to find your purpose, listen to this well. I'm going to give you some very simple ways to deal with it. Very simple ways. Now, you must have a growth mindset as a person. A growth mindset. Now, a growth mindset helps you to know that whatever your hand finds to do, you can do it well. A growth mindset helps you to understand that I can be better. You know, some people will say that, okay, um, I've heard people say that God would have to speak to you to tell you what your purpose is. True. But those are very few people that probably work with such tools. How many people actually hear audibly? I see you have five minutes. I have none. No, I have five. I, I know the time. <laughs> Whatever your hand finds to do, you can do it. Now, don't have a fixed mindset. This is me. This is my life. This is how I must go through it. This is what I must do. No. Have a growth mindset. A growth mindset is a mindset that says that I can be better. I can know better. I can study more. Now, listen. When I was coming through life, I asked myself, what should I be doing? Now, I did not hear one voice, one mystical voice telling me, this is what you should do. This is how you should go about it. So guess what? Every opportunity I saw, I began to take it. In the process of taking it, I began to fine-tune. Are, are you getting me? I began to fine-tune. There was a time I was doing forex market. I was doing stock broken. I was doing this. I was doing that. You know, and at the point I had to ask myself, what exactly should I be doing in the midst of all of this? Now, so, and see, the good thing is that there are now tools, there are softwares that can help you in achieving what you are wired to do as a person. You can go on it, do a little career test, 
get a little idea around it. It gives you an, an idea. But can I say this? What causes you pain is a clue to your purpose. What is it that you see? It causes you pain. You're not happy about it. It makes you cry. That's a clue. It may not necessarily be your purpose, but it's a clue to your purpose. Your pain. See, and let me tell you something about pain. If I lift my hand up like this for 10 minutes, what do you think will happen to my right hand? It will begin to pain me. It will begin to pain me. And I can start shouting, my hand is pinning me. My hand is pinning me. So what can you do about my hand that is pinning me? All I need to do is to put it down and not to shout. But I can go on social media and start shouting, my hand is pinning me. Help me. Help me. My hand is pinning me. And, everybody, and all I just needed to do is an adjustment in my life. Just put that hand down. Once you put it down, the pain reduces. You still feel the pain, but it will reduce. After it has reduced, then it will go numb. And after a while, you don't feel the pain again. Just adjust. And that's why the purpose is a very necessary adjustment for your life. It's a ne so your pain is very critical. Let me tell you one of the things I've done with my life. I've learned to convert my pain into purpose. Everywhere I go to, I sell my shame. What does Oprah do? She sells her shame. Some of you have had shames in your life and you cover it that nobody should know. The first story I gave you is a story of my shame. I walk around talking about my shame. I talk about my shame in the corporate industry, in the trading room. I talk about my shame in education everywhere. I, I make money from my shame. My shame feeds me. My shame puts money on my table. My shame feeds my family. Your pain is a very powerful thing. And critical conversion is what you need. How to critically convert your pain into purpose. So whatever causes you pain is a clue to your purpose. Number two is this. What is it that you can do well that even when you are sleeping, when they wake you up, you can still do it? For me, if you wake me up from my sleep and say I need you to train on this particular topic for any organization in the world, I will wake up from my sleep. I will do it without stress. What is yours? It's also a clue to your purpose. It may not necessarily be your purpose, but you are getting closer to it. Purpose is one powerful thing that helps you to switch on the light. And the last point that I will drop with you as we go is this. As you are finding purpose, please pay attention to relationships. Life is a collection of relationships. And relationships will compensate for the things that you do not have. This is the way God has designed life to be. While you are trying to achieve purpose and you are trying to switch on your light, listen to this. This thing would only work because man is interconnected to every man. Purpose is you finding yourself. Then the next thing is how are you interconnected to the other person? Relationship, very powerful. I shared this story with you. One day I was going to Abia State and um, I had to go through Samumbakwe Airport, which was at Oweri. So, I went from Lagos and I sat down by a man next to me, short man, average, he's of average height. But by the time I'm done with the story, you know that he's taller than I am. Do physically, I'm taller than him. So he sat, we sat down by each other. And I said, good morning. He said, good morning. How are you doing today? I said, fine. And the man never spoke to me again. I said, can I meet you? The man did his hand like this to me. When he did like this, it means that he needed to have his own time. And he brought up the newspaper and he began to read. And he read and read and read and read. And I have a very, very funny policy for myself. You see, I can't sit down next to you and not know nothing about you. It's a life policy. It's a waste of money. Why would I be in business class just to take tea, juice, and biscuit? I want to meet you. I want to know you. So the man said, I should give him some time. Then he kept on reading the newspapers. Then we, the, the guy said, oh, it's five minutes to the end of the, of the flight. I said, wow. I didn't meet this guy. And that's how serious it is for me. Like, oh, I sat down next to somebody. I didn't know who the person is. Let me tell you how serious that is. It's so serious that I know that my next level is connected to somebody I'm sitting with. That's how much I am cautious of my interconnectedness to another human being. Not trying to look for one miracle somewhere or something. I can tell. So see what happened. And when it was five minutes to the end, the man said, oh, I'm sorry. I was reading about myself. 
in my mind, I said, excuse me, what did you say? You're reading about yourself. You must be somebody very, very important. And I said that in my mind. I said, oh, can we talk? So we spoke very briefly, and we just introduced ourselves. And um, he was coming down the aircraft. The man is about 15 to 20 years, um, about 15 years older than I am. 15 to 20 years. So when he was coming, I carried out his, his briefcase. Listen. And um, I said, can I help you carry your briefcase? The man said, carry my briefcase? I said, yes. Then I took it from him. He said, thank you. He said, nobody has done that to me. In the business club, come. I said, fine. So we went down. When we went down the aircraft, I saw three officers walking towards me. So now, before that time, I just lost money in a deal. I think I lost about 70 million. Everything I had in my business went down, including people's money. So anything on uniform, including Boy Scout, was looking for me. So suddenly, it was in my head that, wow, is this where it is going to end? I saw them walking toward, you know, I don't know if it has happened to you before. In a split of 20 seconds, you will play the entire story of your life and you know that this is where it's going to end. So, as they were coming, I said, well, whatever will happen, will happen. At least I've done my best. So, when they came towards me, the first thing they did was that they saluted me. Then it dawned on me that you can't be saluting somebody you want to arrest. Then I calmed down. Then suddenly it dawned on me that the person standing next to me is the person they are saluting and it's not me. So I should not fool myself. You know, and, and they walked up and they took the bag from me and the man gave me his card. Then I went to where I would pick up my luggage and I opened up the card. When I saw the card, the name I saw on it was Yemi Osibajo, CUC Chamber or something. Now, he wasn't the vice president of Nigeria. At best, as at that, I mean, after that time, he became um, attorney general in Lagos. Now, so inside the lawyer that I met, listen to this, was an attorney general. Inside the lawyer that I met was a vice president of a country. Inside the lawyer that I met was probably the president Nigeria never had. Do you see that? Look at how you are connected. So the question is, what kind of prayer will I sit down to pray? And say, God, as I'm going out, I want to meet the president of Nigeria. You know, you can't calculate that. But you must understand your interconnectedness to every human being. And it starts with purpose. Purpose. When you find purpose, that's why I am here. Number two, you must understand that you are interconnected to every human being that you meet in life. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that will be a few points that can help you to switch on the light of purpose. Please, 2 p.m. meeting. The 2 p.m. meeting, do all you can to be part of it. Many things will be shared about relationship. How to switch it on is the most powerful thing that can happen to you after God on the earth. I hope with this few points of mind, I've been able to help you this morning. Thank you very much, Vacation 2024. Thank you.